So then this guy comes into the, into the store and he actually wants to buy this huge, ridiculous oak workbench. And even though it is secondly for sale and it has a price tag on it, nobody knows what to do because they can't even get it out of the store. So, long story short, I am having to love this giant workbench on the roof of my Toyota halfway across town just to deliver it to this guy. Good thing you didn't get caught under any overpasses. <laughs> they are just too cute. You watch, he'll ruin it. So, where do you work? Well, I used to work at the post office. Oh god, here it goes. What? I used to. I just, I just couldn't take it anymore. What do you mean? The stamping, the filing, the same thing. Over and over and over again. My life stretched out before me like an endless wall of envelopes. Clarence, don't you remember what happened the last time? I was dreaming about lines, having nightmares about paper cuts. I was trapped in a cock-ass hell of paperwork and complaints. I had to get out, but I wouldn't go out with a mere whimper. Oh, no. What's he talking about? He's trying to tell a joke. Clarence, you're creeping her out. <laughs> they were going to remember me. No one was gonna forget my name. I drew up my plans, and the night before the deed, I called my mother one last time. Oh God, I can't look. <laughs> I told her her son's gift of life would not be wasted. He was going to be somebody. He was going to bring down the system of despair. Then my mom got scared. She said, "You're moving with the auntie and Uncle Melvin." I was full of Gabby when it came to the house, but it's a question of dicing with me. The only thing I can say is that Gabby was there, but not forget it, your home's the better. That was not funny. I appreciate you guys. Oh, that was so not funny. No one ever thinks it's funny. It's a pity laugh. All right. Okay, so maybe it was a little bit funny, but. You're lucky that I have a terrible sense of humor. I'm sure you scared away a lot of women with that joke. A lot? Try all. All of the women. Every single woman. <laughs> <laughs> if that doesn't do it, the dead baby jokes usually do. <laughs> the Holocaust. Oh! I was going to say Donald Trump, but yeah, let's bring out Holocaust jokes on the first date. Oh, well, while we're on the subject. Oh my god, she thinks he's funny. <laughs> so, besides working at a boutique full of social bats, and sometimes shopping at a charming supermarket run by a man with no teeth, what do you do with your life? Come on, sit down. He's not going to ruin it. You don't know his track record. Believe it or not, he's actually kind of charming. Well, plenty of people thought that Charles Manson was sort of charming. <laughs> but believe me, the whole pretending to be crazy thing is a lot less charming when you're actually crazy. Okay, <laughs> if he's Charles Manson, then she's... Else, what are you doing here? Come on. I haven't talked to someone in 12 years. Well, what do you want to talk about? Oh, God, anything. <laughs> the table, <laughs> the collapsible chair, ceiling tiles, anything. <laughs> I mean, that's poor design, really. Okay. Not the ceiling tiles. What's your story? My story? Yeah. I want to hear what it's like being you. Well, I mean, I've always just sort of been with Clarence. I, mean, I can't talk to anyone else. I just kind of do what he does. I go where he goes. He's my best friend. And a huge pain sometimes, but I mean, I guess he's all I ever needed, I suppose. You've never wanted anyone else to talk to? I don't know. Usually I'm glad that he's got the job of interacting with these assholes out here. And every once in a while, I guess I, I do feel like I need something else. Have you ever talked to Clarence about stuff like this? No. I guess I don't. I guess that means you're the first person I've ever talked about this with. Look at this, you've known me for 30 minutes and you've already got me talking about my feelings. Sorry, it's just, this is all I and I used to talk about. Back when we did talk. Well, what about you? I mean, what are you and Elle like? Just like you and Clarence. <laughs> I've always been with her. Growing up, she didn't have any friends. Her parents were always moving across the country, so. She never spent more than half a year in a single school. It was hard for her. So, I guess that's where I came in. No matter where her parents moved her, I'd always be there. I'd go to school with her and tell her jokes during class. She was everything. That was all I knew. All I wanted to do. That sounds like how Clarence and I used to be. So? Years passed like this, and we grew up. She started to realize how different she was. Of course, she always knew that no one else could see me. 
what she started to realize is that it wasn't real. It was just in her head. She was okay with it at first. I may not be real, but I'm friendship. She tried to tell it to her parents. Parents always seem to ruin these sorts of things. They didn't even realize that there was something wrong with her until she was halfway through middle school. They, they didn't even know something was wrong until they got a phone call from her teacher. Did you know that your 13-year-old daughter still has an imaginary friend? They freaked out. They threatened to send her to a mental hospital. But she kept trying to explain them that she was fine and that she was happy with me. They sent her to a therapist. They gave her some medicine. She refused to take them. Her parents, they made the whole thing about them, you know? They made the whole damn thing about them and their marriage and how else illness was tearing them apart. They were so selfish. They divorced. It's like a war. She couldn't take it. She broke down and she was going to hurt herself. So I stopped her. I don't know how it happened, but all of a sudden, I took over. I pushed her back and I was the one who was in control. I wasn't just in her mind anymore, I was actually in the world. Yeah, once. What happened? It doesn't matter. What did you do? I realized that I could prove that it was real. And I could tell her parents that Elden needed any help. And that she was happy with me. And I could tell them how selfish they were being, what they were doing to her. And I did. And they realized that their daughter They tried to send her to a mental hospital unless she took the medicine. She refused. She decided that we were going to run away together. The night before we were going to run, she had her last therapist meeting. He told her that as long as she had me, she never had no more life. She never had no more friends. I can see that it was right. I don't deserve better than that. I wanted her to have other friends, a boyfriend, a husband, a child. So, I told her to take the medicine. And she did? She wouldn't at first. But then, I explained to her that I've always been a part of her. And when she takes the medicine, I just go back inside the line and come on with her. And even though she wouldn't see me or hear me, I'd still be with her. She hesitated. She cried. Finally, she agreed. What was it like? I thought I was going to die. When she took the medicine, I thought I'd just fade back to wherever I came from. But I didn't go anywhere. I stayed, but she stopped seeing me and hearing me and was talking to me. Sometimes I, I feel like she's looking at me. And I'd be so sure that she finally saw me and, and she'd say, Oh, Lily. It's been too long. And we talk about all the things that we missed over the years. You been to prom? I only wanted to go to prom. Yeah, it was incredible. You should really go sometime. You know what the best part was? Is that I can say that I've been to prom. 
Yeah, why do you think I want to go prom? <laughs> and by the best part, I mean the only good part. What? Yeah, it was terrible. There was vomiting college students everywhere, and it was raining the entire time, but now I get to outpipster all my hipster friends at parties. Well, when I was in Prague... Hipsters, eh? Oh, yeah. I work at Anthropology, this little boutique, you know, and all my co-workers are these trendy 20-somethings who essentially pay a lot of money to look like they're broke. I, I don't think I've ever actually met a hipster. Like, I've heard about them on the YouTubes, but I've never met them face to face. Oh, you are missing out, I can assure you. Um, I'm going to go to the girls' room really quick. But uh, when I come back, hipster stories all around. Oh, and if the waiter comes by, would you please order me a turkey pesto panini? Will do. I'll be right back. <coughs> what are you doing? What? What are you doing? I, I, I'm, I'm talking to... Who? There's a, who are you talking to? Uh, I, okay, well, you don't understand it. There's, 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 there's a what, Jasper? What, what is there another? That's what I'm trying to tell you is that there's another... Another, another what? <laughs> is, there, is there another Jasper? Would you please just let me... No! No, I want to know what information is so important that you are going... Ah! What? Okay, look, Clarence, I'm trying to tell you that there's... What? Another. What are you trying to tell me? What? Are you going to send us great lengths to have extended conversations with yourself? Like some sort of psychopath. Oh my god! Oh my god! Yes. I would like a club sandwich. Don't forget the panini. Stop saying things! Stop saying things! Stop saying things! Also, I would like a turkey pesto panini. From my date. <laughs> you a date. Yes, I am here with a date. And how is your date enjoying this? <laughs> She's in the bathroom. Of course. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Fury. Yes, that'll be all. Yeah, <laughs> so, but yeah, that was 